Welcome to ADOS Aiming Technology Technology. Let's take a look at this 19 Dodge Ram. Must be a million of them on the road. This vehicle came into the shop because they replaced the alternator. The system wasn't charging. And after replacing this alternator, it still didn't charge. So they decided it needs to be programmed. Look at this, E-Torque. Look at the giant power cable that's coming out of this alternator generator. So I'd like to know, look at how powerful this is. Look at the size of this alternator. It weighs, I don't know, 150 pounds. The module is mounted right on top of it, or an inverter or something. Yeah, I can use it for weights in the shop. Uh, but unfortunately, there's a core on it, and I have to return it to the dealer so they can rebuild it. I don't know if this alternator was good or bad. I'm not really sure. But I'm going to hook up my Y-Tech and see what's going on. The simple request is to program it, which makes sense. If it has a module right on top of it, and you just installed it, that makes sense. It's not your ordinary $100 alternator that you put in. So turning on the key, everything powers up. And I could see the gauge high low that obviously the car is not running and it's not. So I want to familiarize my system first. I want to know what I'm dealing with. How many more components are there? Mitchell didn't have these diagrams, but I could see that it's got a 48 volt. So that big blue cable coming out of the alternator is 48 volts. But it says module battery pack control. And so this is the alternator. Now let me move over the diagram. This is actually the alternator. <clears throat> so that module on top, so it's got ignition, input, it's got a power fuse, constant power, cam and crankshaft, the crankshaft sensor actually comes into the alternator. Then it's got the usual data lines, but it also has private CAN data line. And the private CAN data line talks to the battery module, which is somewhere else in the car. I still have to find it. Um, it is a pickup truck. They don't have a lot of places to hide it. Hopefully they didn't put it behind the dash. So I figured, okay, now that I know the system, let me try to program it. But here's issue number one. The battery control module is not communicating. And that is that 48 volt battery that has a direct data line to the hybrid control processor. Now, the hybrid control processor is the alternator because on top of it, it has the processor that's part of the alternator. So after a further digging, um, it indicated that it's behind the back seat, that the battery pack that I'm not communicating with is actually behind the back seat. So right away, my analytical brain is starting to think, maybe this customer replaced the alternator, and there's actually nothing wrong with it. So before I'm going to go program something that I can't communicate, I decided, let me do some testing. It doesn't take long. I removed the seat. I fast forward the video. I took the seat out. I took off a tiny little cover to access these terminals. So I want to see if these terminals are even powered up. So with the ignition on, I get 10 volts on the 48 volt. So I'm missing 38, 48. So I'm missing like 38 volts. And then I get 12 volt battery coming in, all hidden behind this metal cover right behind the seat. I would have chosen to put a hard plastic cover because if something gets jammed in there, it would short out the terminals. Now, these are the codes I'm having, all these U codes. So I decided, let me research this before I go any further. Is this a common issue? Is there something else going on? So I look at all the U codes and the TSBs on this year make and model vehicle. None of them are related to what I have. It does say internal control torque calibration, but it's the middle code that you see on the screen, the U1817, that after I unplugged this battery pack wiring, because I, what I didn't show you on camera is that I checked every pin coming into this connector, all the data lines, all the power, ignition, and the private data line. After I unplugged it and plugged it back in, I realized that it stored a code for not communicating. That means it was communicating, even though it wasn't talking to the car. So with no other choice, everything checked out, I decided, let me program it anyway. There was a flash update for the alternator, generator, motor, power, processor. So I fast forward the video, 
basically, I just updated it and installed the latest software. And of course, when you program something, it's going to set a bunch of codes. And I'm just going to go ahead and erase it. But I just want to give you a brief explanation of why it has that giant 48 volt alternator. Because the alternator also acts as a motor. So when you try to accelerate from 0 to 60, 48 volt goes into that and it turns into a motor. And it helps turn the crankshaft through the heavy belt. But here's magic. After I programmed it, the battery control module all of a sudden came to life. So this is the reason I really made this video. Don't overanalyze it and spend all this time taking apart the car and checking it. Just program it first. Because my analytical brain is like, I can't program something that is not responding. So I went all the extra, which was fun. I figured out how the system works and I like to learn new things. But just in the future, if you get an alternator and you replace it on this particular vehicle, just go ahead and program it first and still see if you have an issue. So once I program that, I have a couple multi-axis um, sensor, but it's a stored code, so I'm not concerned about that. Pretty much the whole car cleared up. And now the big question is, did it solve the original problem? Is the vehicle charging now? Because the original complaint is that the alternator would not charge and the battery would go flat, dead, and the vehicle was inoperative. So now I cleared all the codes. There's still a couple of updates on all the modules, but that's not what the car is here for. So let me start this vehicle and see. So I got my battery voltage. I'm gonna, uh, I should use alligator clips that will hold better on the terminals. But I just want to take a quick check. So I'm going to stick the 12 volt meter and fire this up, turn on the engine and actually see. So I got to step on the brake and start this thing and figure out does it charge. I'm firing up the engine, and by the way, watch that gauge right there. High to low, that's the battery, it jumped up, but they're right there. And I don't see the red light on the screen that says charging failure and a picture of a battery. So it looks like it actually fixed the car, but I'm still going to check my voltmeter. And by the way, this whole system, the alternator was over $1,000, the mechanic charged a couple of hundred to change it. And they paid for programming and diagnostics. Yeah, so it ends up costing $2,000 to add a little torque on acceleration, which I'm not really sure. But there we go. 14.18 volts. The system is charging. Thank you for watching ADAS Saming. If you like these content and you like these kind of videos, give me a thumbs up or please subscribe. ADAS Aiming by Jack Short.